they found two surviving children hiding from the shooter. Five people were found uh, dead. Four, three adults, and one eight-year-old child. And the, then the shooter committed suicide. So we had five homicides, four homicides at this event. This event is something that we prayed that would never happen. This event is something that we pray that we could pre prevent. But something like this sometimes is non-preventable. We work hand in hand with the Women's Center. Our detectives that were out there on the scene handled the scene with respect and dignity as much as we could to, uh, to investigate what has happened. The, uh, the family members had no idea what was going to happen. Through the investigation, we found out that the uh, suspect was returning home to return a child from visitation. The grandmother was trying to take the child to bring him in, and the suspect wanted to come into the home, and the grandmother allowed him to come into the home. Had no idea his intent. When he met his ex-wife uh, at the home, uh, our investigation showed that uh, he wanted to get re, uh, reunited, and when she refused, that's when the shooting supposedly took place. At this time, I would ask uh, Miss Woodland, Miss Winland, I'm sorry, from the Women's Center to come up to speak, to let everyone know that there are services here in Fort Bend County that you can use domestic uh, violence or anything like that to reach out to law enforcement. Now I would have Ms. Winman uh, to come up at this time from the Women's Center to say a few words. Thank you, Sheriff Fagan. You know, Fort Bend Women's Center has been serving this region for over 43 years. And our deepest sympathies to the family and over their great loss. You know, there are a lot of signs and warning signs of domestic violence, and it's important for people to realize that there are good resources out there to get help and early on. If an individual is in a relationship with, or it, I'm sorry, excuse me, if an individual in a relationship, family, or household is using violence or, co or coercion, to keep control over another person, then domestic abuse is happening. Some of the signs of abuse to watch out for when someone is acting in a controlling fashion, they're controlling where you go and who you see, or is discouraging you from seeing friends or family members, if they're taking your money or refusing you to give you money for necessary expenses, if they're looking at you or acting in ways that scare you, if you are experiencing emotional abuse at various levels or you know threatening behavior of course or any sh signs showing violence or attempted violence or, or thoughts of violence the women's center provides numerous services to help victims with safety planning and to help them exit the situation, we have an emergency shelter, we have counseling, legal assistance, and many other services for survivors to become independent and free of this kind of abuse. Our emergency hotline is the first step to gain information on how to get help. Anyone who is a victim or anyone who thinks they might be experiencing domestic violence or if you are a friend of someone that you're concerned about, we encourage you to call our emergency hotline. It's the first step to get information on how to get help. Anyone who is a victim or wants to assist a victim are welcome to call us at 281-342-4357, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for assistance. Or you can even email us at help at fbwc.org and you can also receive information via the website at fbwc.org. And obviously, our relationship with the first responders and the sheriff's department are critical 
in helping these survivors receive the support they need. And if you are in immediate danger, of course, call 911. But I think they will over again. And all of our services are free, and we serve men, women, children, anyone who is experiencing this kind of violence. Thank you. I want to reiterate one thing that she said that is very important. Just because someone didn't hit you, just because someone didn't hold you by force, if you think that you're involved in any type of domestic violence, call, reach out for help. Reach out for help. Any signs, any type of sign, you need to reach out for help. The sooner you reach out for help may help prevent something like this from happening. At this time, if you have any questions, Yes. Um, can you break down in a little bit more detail the ages of everybody involved in this? And the adults were uh, between the ages of 40 and 45, and the uh, young child was, uh, I believe, eight years old. And was that the child that was being returned from visitation? No, it was the niece of the uh, suspect, the niece of the suspect. Yes. And how old were those two children? I believe uh, 13 and seven. And, seven. and was everyone in the house related? Yes. So were all of these victims residents of the house or were there some visitors? Some were visiting at the time and the rest was residents. And have we had any prior calls to this house? No, and that's why I was saying uh, no calls at that house, but at the uh, the suspect and wife, they had one call, but it was a disturbance call. It was only a verbal argument, a verbal argument. That's what I'm saying, that if you have any thought that uh, domestic violence is being there, or someone overly being aggressive or anything like that, let us make that de decision. Call us for help. You may not recognize the signs, but uh, we do, people at the Women's Center. That's why it's vital, the sooner the better, to reach out for the help. And as Ms. Wendland said, it's free. It's a free service. But it can't be used if you don't reach out for the help. One thing I'm uh, known for saying here at the office, if I don't know about it, I can't do anything about it. And that's the same with the Women's Center. If they don't know about it, it's nothing they can do about it. We need the public's help, not just the victim, neighbors. If you see something, you can report it as well. Will you identify the suspect this time? Yes. This, uh, Captain Simon. You can. Okay. The suspect is 46-year-old Ulrich Alfonso Barrett. A L R I C K Alfonso A L P H A N S O Barrett B A R R E double T. And are um, are you going to be identifying the victims? For the family at this time, we will not be identifying the victims' uh, names. Uh, I, I will tell you, it was two female adult females and one adult male and then an eight-year-old child. And can you tell us if um, one of those adult females includes this suspect's wife? Yes, a strange wife. A strange wife. Were there any surviving adults in the house or just the two children? Yes, the grandmother. Okay. And I know that you said you had the one call about the verbal disturbance between this couple previously. Any other calls with um, Barrett himself? Is he known to your department at all? At this time, we, we don't see anything else. Oh, we're still looking into that. When was the first call? Uh, 645. No, no, I mean. The, 652, yes. The, the verbal <coughs> disturbance that you all got a call about previously. 
That was on January 25th of 2023. residents yeah. I believe they made it there within minutes uh, it had already taken place so the uh, I can get you the time uh, a little bit later but it was minute but it wouldn't have made any difference. it already had happened Jerry, can you talk about uh, domestic violence cases um, yes right now in Fort Bend County uh, Uh, 2023, approximately 3,900 calls for domestic violence. In 2024, as of to date, 160. Domestic violence is a crime that is sometimes underreported. And that uh, was one of my campaign uh, pledges to address domestic violence. It's one of the most out there because sometimes of because of embarrassment or sometimes because of they're afraid to reach out to law enforcement or the culture of the family we have to stop that stigma we have to stop that stigma to save lives and to save individuals this type of crime it affects the whole family for generations and not just the family but the community as well uh, I believe Ms. Uh, Winman uh, wanted to talk about some numbers yeah. with our agency as well. Just to give you perspective, last year in 2023, we served over 2,300 uh, survivors. And that includes men, women, and children. About 40% of those are children who uh, have received services from us as well. And we saw about a 5% increase. And those are just the folks who came and received services from us. Our emergency hotline receives, on average, over 10,000 calls a year. And that can be anything from just, you know, innocent inquiries to people who are in immediate danger. So uh, we have seen an increase in the numbers of folks we're serving. You have a question for her? Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, do you do you think that, it, like, has there been an increase in domestic violence locally, or are people getting better at calling and reporting these things, or is it a combination of both? That's a really great question, and I, I think it's a combination probably of both. And, of course, post-COVID, you know, we had some strange dynamics during COVID, and that our calls actually initially went down because the uh, victim or survivor was pretty much trapped there with their abuser in their home. So the numbers were a little odd, you know, over 21, 2020, 2020 and 2021, but yes, we have seen an increase. And we continue to expand our services, um, but unfortunately we have most of the time waiting lists because the demand is so great. No, victim's mother. And are the children in family custody? Uh, at this time, they are. Yes. Yes. Here at the Fort Bend County Sheriff's Office, we have a victim liaison that uh, if there's uh, family violence or victims of any kind of a criminal offense, uh, if you're a victim of a criminal offense, then they uh, go ahead and 
make contact with you to gather your information to provide any kind of services that might be needed that could be from financial to counseling to uh to housing and uh different other other items that they that they have uh usually the victim liaison reaches out to the family and fills out some paperwork that um, that needs to get turned into uh to the state so that way they can uh, they can receive compensation services I know this is um, kind of a hard question, but when it comes to the crime scene itself, were all of the victims in one space, or did it seem like the suspect went throughout the house? They uh, they were at home, and it was during the morning time, so some victims were in, in separate rooms. Like asleep? We, we don't know if they were asleep or not but uh, all of them were in night clothes. Any other questions? Um, who called 911? Because when I was going back and listening, I think it was like a juvenile or something yes. that called 911. He said he knew the shooter. Can you expand on that? It was the 13-year-old uh, young male that made the call. Uh, I have to commend that young man for being brave enough to pick up the phone to, to make that call. I know that was very difficult for him to do but it was a 13-year-old. If that, if that's not any more questions, um, we'll conclude this press conference.